Hi, this is Vern Sargis, president of OSU, and here for another edition of Inside OSU. And today's is going to be very interesting because we're going to interview a person who is at the cutting edge of, the, of an evolution in uh, medical diagnosis and treatment, Dr. Bennett Amalu, uh, who you may know better is uh, Will Smith's portrayal in the movie Concussion. Dr. Amalou, welcome Thank you to President. Inside OSU. Thank you for having me. Thank Fantastic. You so much. We're delighted to have you. I'm honored to be here. So at some point, you, you ended up in Pittsburgh. Yes, I, I started walking in and Pittsburgh. And that was the beginning of this, uh, this incredible journey you've been on yes. uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, brain injuries. Yes. Sir. yes. Talk about what happened. You know, it, it began on September 28, 2002. You actually remember the day. Yes, I remember. It was a Saturday. I turned on the television to listen to the news of the day. And everybody, CNN, ESPN, MSNBC, almost every channel was talking about this great American football player who had died suddenly. But before his death, his life was um, a, almost uh, a destitute life. It was almost like a vagabond. He, he lived off his truck sometimes. This was Mike Webster, Mike the former Webster. center for the yes, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes. And they made certain derogatory statements about him, which I thought was offensive. Um, they said, oh, like, just like many other retired football players, they don't do so well. They don't invest their money well. They do this, they do that. And I wondered um, if they played football, they wore helmets, that that meant they were exposed to repeated blows of the head over a prolonged period that couldn't they have suffered some type of brain damage that would account for their um, because profiles? The, after because the retirement. brain, as you've explained to me off the air, the brain floats around inside your skull. Yes, yes. Uh, I've done about 8,000 autopsies. One of the imperfections of, of the human body is the anatomy of the brain. The brain is about 60 to 80 percent water. It floats freely inside your skull. In fact, it has no attachments to the skull. So whenever you suffer an impact with or without a helmet, your brain bounces around inside your skull. Mm -hmm. And the brain is what we call a post-mitotic organ. What does that mean? The brain does not have a reasonable capacity to regenerate itself. Yeah, can't to, heal itself. Yes, to heal itself. And so over time, you receive micro traumas, repetitive blows. I got to work by serendipity. He was lying on my autopsy table when I got oh to work. Oh my goodness. And we knew why he died. In fact, he died in a hospital. He died of a massive heart attack. There was no reason for me to do the autopsy, but I did. I opened up his skull, expecting to see a brain that had been damaged. His brain appeared normal. Hmm. And <laughs> I, I remember that moment very vividly. I was extremely disappointed with myself. As I, you thought you were on to something. I, no, I did not. I was, I, I, I was totally confused because mm -hmm. what I expected mentally or intellectually was not what I was seeing, and I couldn't connect the dots. There was just something; it, it did not fit. It's so all I, I, I had this intellectual agitation. And I said to myself, okay, you know what? Why don't you save this brain, preserve it, so it gives you some more time, spend more time on the brain and figure it out. So I did. At some point, you took the, your findings to the NFL, right? Because you published <laughs> yes, this. Yes, yes. <laughs> because, again, I applied the principles of epidemiological methods. When you see a case that has not been described before, you publish it as what we call a sentinel case, mm -hmm. hoping that you will find a second case. Because by the time I was publishing Mike Webster, I did Terry Long's autopsy. Terry Long was a football player. Another player. football player who committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had a second case. So now I had a strategy, applying epidemiological methods. And so when I saw Mike Webster, I saw some propositional value in the findings 
that this was a finding that would enhance football and enhance the lives of the players who are the humanity of football. So I most gladly took it to the NFL. Who did you, did you call Roger Goodell? I no, mean, I did not. <laughs> how did you take it to the uh, NFL? I took it to the NFL's scientific paper, scientific journal. When you submit a paper, two um, doctors will review it. If they agree that it's publishable, it's published. If they don't agree, a third person, okay. That paper, as much as I could recall now, was reviewed by at least 18 doctors. In fact, at some time, some point, the, my responses to the critique of the reviewers was about 10 to 20 times the length of the paper. So finally, it was published. So they wanted to squelch it. They wanted to sweep it under the rug. When the first paper was published, the NFL made a very calculated and brilliant attempt to professionally exterminate me. <laughs> they sent a very strongly worded letter to the journal that my paper was scientifically flawed. They came after me rather than after the concept because they knew in their heart of hearts that the concept was not flawed. So I had a choice to make. Do I keep quiet and simply ignore it, or do I speak out and become a voice for the voiceless? I chose the later to become a voice for the voiceless. And how did, you, how did you communicate that? How did you use your voice? I had to come up with a strategy, a two-pronged strategy. One, I needed to document the historical event. As, as, as much as I could. One, make sure each case you see, publish it. Then another strategy was, Bennett, take your story to Hollywood. Hollywood is a very powerful agent of change. This is not about you. Don't be interested in the money. Just give your story to somebody. So I gave my story to a young producer in Hollywood, David Waltoff, very young, smart guy. So I gave it to him. It took us six years to get to the movie. And I think Will Smith, Ridley Scott, Sony, what they've done is they've taken this concept from the depths of the valley of the American psyche to the mountain peak of the American psyche because it's permeated our consciousness. People finally are beginning to talk about it. Well, that's, a, that's another uh, edition of Inside OSU. We've been delighted to have you with us. I know our students are enjoying your company and your story, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.